we did this. start with your name and your pronouns. Okay. My name is Parker Hayford and I use he, they pronouns. Thank you. <clears throat> so, first question that I like to start most people off with, how would you describe what you do as a creative? How would I describe it? <sighs> and if it helps to give you some context, um, I usually ask this question as kind of a, a a setter for what it is that you do in terms of like um, what 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 do you make or what do you participate in or what do you and the reason why I ask that question is because like a lot of people I interview for example are maybe known on their Instagrams as photographers but maybe they do a bunch of other creative stuff too and so your personal definition for yourself of like what kind of creative you are might be different than how people perceive you. So in terms of like <clears throat> how you would kind of identify yourself or what kinds of things you like participate in creatively, like how would you describe what you do? That makes sense. Okay. I think I paused because of imposter syndrome. Okay. You know, I was talking to my roommate earlier, like this idea of being an artist. I'm like, you know, I guess I'm an artist. It's like, I do a lot of creative things. I definitely am, but I don't always claim that label. Mm -hmm. But I act, and I sing, and I write, and I dance. Um, I do other things too, but I think that like performing arts is definitely right now what I'm most connected to and most in practice of. Mm -hmm. Music's also really important to me. So is writing. All of them. I do a little visual art too, but not as serious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, when when you and I first met on the internet, which was like circa 2011 or 2012, uh, we both had essentially outfit blogs on Blogger. Um, I have a couple questions for you that sort of tie to that. Um, I'm wondering, like specifically for the blog, like what that blog meant to you and what you wanted to do with it and then also like how personal expression factors into clothing for you because even watching you since then in those like 12 years and just like your relationship with clothing it seems like there is a relationship there and I'm wondering like if you can talk about both of those things. Oh, totally. Actually after I answered the last question I was like oh I should have said something about fashion too. Yeah I think I'm looking at like part of my clothes. I think that Personal expression is like a mental health tool for me. Like, it's important to me to have like a sensory experience that feels good to me. And also, yeah, like every day I get to choose what I feel good in. And it does impact how other people perceive me, but I try to dress for myself. When I was doing the fashion blog, that was an interesting journey. Um, my roommate at the time had a fashion blog, and it was when blogs were new. Before, well, you know. Um, I think that she started her blog, I don't know, like 2009 or something. Um, maybe 2008. And I would photograph her sometimes. So that was kind of how I was introduced to it and exposed to it. And. I was like, oh, this is like kind of fun. And so we started photographing each other and I started my blog. Um, at the time, I think building community was a part of it. Like I met people from all over like you mm -hmm. and like all over the world. Mm -hmm. And it was just really fun, I think. I think it was just really fun. Um, I also really do enjoy writing and it gave me an outlet for that. As the years went on, my blog became a little bit more about writing, and I also did like photography, and it was a little bit less of outfit posts of what I was wearing, and kind of more just like inspiration or just a 
place to dump my thoughts, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, the very last post I ever posted was actually, I didn't re remember this until years later and I went back and found the archives, but it was a, uh, like a, an opinion piece of response to an NPR article about a trans kid. And it was before I really had like access to a lot of my gender identity, but I was so like activated by that post. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> like around about <clears throat> what year was that? Because I'm curious. I don't remember the blog really changing, but it might have been around the time that I was using blogs less. And so like I may not have been vlogging as much and not looking at other people's blogs as much. Mm -hmm. So like when was your last post? Uh, it was in, if I'm doing the summer of... When would that have been? 2015? That's what I was thinking, 2015. Yeah, I wasn't vlogging by then. Yeah, I was going to guess that. Really? Uh-huh. Nice. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take us back a little bit to your writing um, and talk about that for a little bit. From what I've seen of yours, a lot of your writing is usually very personal and sometimes autobiographical. Um, there's that work in progress that I read that has a fictional character that's based on your experiences and then like a lot of your poetry is very personal. Um, and I'm curious like what that writing means to you and also like just kind of what your approach to writing is in general and that can be you know launching off from things that you were doing on the blog to things that you've been doing more recently like whatever version of that like you want to talk about yeah um big question so yes i think that like autobiographical journaling um personal writing is i don't want to say the easiest but maybe like it's very natural to me to write about my experience and I think part of what's so helpful to me about writing is sometimes in conversation like I have a hard time finding words for how I'm feeling or like what's really going on with me and so when I write it it just comes it just all comes out and I sometimes feel like when I zoom out and observe my life it, it it's actually helpful to me to write about myself in third person too mm -hmm. Because that's actually, like, a lot of times how I feel like I'm living. It's like observing myself. Um, usually, most of the time, well, I guess in more recent years, when I write, I don't necessarily plan to do anything with it. I just, it just, like, comes out. And then sometimes I go, oh, I think I'm going to share that. And it feels like something tangible that I can do to, like, make to make my life experience like mean something like maybe one person will read it and relate to it or something because like other people's writing does that for me so it kind of just feels like okay i'm putting it out there i'm gonna keep going <laughs> do you feel like um <clears throat> do you feel like writing is just a very personal exercise to you then in general versus like other creative things you might do that because you do a lot of performance too so you do also a lot of types of creativity and art that are meant for public consumption mm -hmm. do you feel like writing for you is something that is kind of like in a different category of the reason why a lot of it is personal and autobiographical is it's also like a personal practice for you it's not something that you're necessarily doing like for the purpose of sharing it with other people like, do you, th I don't, I guess I'm, like, kind of answering the question as I'm asking it, which I don't want to do for you, but, like, do you feel like that, the reason why I'm asking, maybe this will give the question a little more context, is, you know, there's some people who, like, everything they create is for themselves, or everything they create is for the public, you know, and there's everything kind of in between, so are there maybe certain things that you do where it's, like, I'm really just doing this whole kind of particular craft for me and if something comes out of it that I want to share I will but like do you think of it in that kind of private term just as a 
craft itself. Yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, that's a really good question. I think... I think that mostly I'll say yes to that suggestion that because it's a, a an important part of my personal practice that I would do even if no one ever read anything I wrote, I would still write. Yeah. Like, I, and not to say that that the other things I wouldn't do, but um, I think that's kind of a stuck point for me actually is that I want to share more of my writing and I want to commit to some bigger projects. And I don't because I kind of just write when I have to write, which is often. But like the idea of like making something f like in a final form for other people, besides poetry, yeah. um, which I've done a lot of times, is like I don't know. I just haven't really wrapped my my head around it. Right. It's kind of not an answer. But that's what I'm... No, I, I... I think I'm... Yeah, I'm still kind of in process about this. Because, like... I think it's as much an answer as mine was a question. <laughs> yeah, valid. <probably. laughs> but, I, yeah, like, I started writing a play that I, I told you about. Like, I've started writing a few different, like, book ideas. Um, I've also anonymously published one of my journals. On what? On a website. Like, what I, kind of website? It's a blog uh -huh. that I made. Oh, okay. And I changed all the. This is this was the. I took a long break from writing, um, partially like a result of like mental health and being in an abusive relationship. But like in my twenties, there was a good amount of time I wasn't writing at all, not even journaling. And when I started journaling again, it was in twenty eighteen, and this first journal, just to me was like, really, it was really helpful to me. Um, when I read over it, I made a lot of big decisions about my life after like reflecting on what I saw there. So I went through and I changed every proper noun, every city, every restaurant, every person's name. I had like a spreadsheet of like who is who. Um, and I typed it up and switched it all out and just like published it as a, P a free PDF. <laughs> and did you get any kind of response to it? Yeah, or? yeah. I actually had, like, I will still have, like, an Instagram account for it. It's, like, not connected to my name whatsoever. And, like, was, like, posting quotes from it for a while. And, I mean, I wasn't really trying to make it, like, a big thing, but I just... What kind of responses it. would you get? Like, people related to it. Like, commenting on it and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've never... No, I think there's one person that when I first published it, I... I showed it to them and they read it. Um, I've also actually let someone physically read that journal, cover to cover. I keep my journals chronicled and there's a lot, like there are page numbers and um, like indexes and charts and data like about a lot of things. And uh, yeah, I, I often think about like, even though I do it for me, I often think about like what what <laughs> there's so much there like what will that what, what will happen of that like when I die I don't know I think about that all the time because I yeah. archive so much of my life I mean even this project right here you know like <clears throat> I, I journal and I have photographs of everything and I have so much I wonder like especially because I am not going to have kids I'm like where where is this going to go when I die so I like that you think about that. Honestly, yeah. if you want, if you happen to die before me and you want to leave it to me in your will, I'll do something with it. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you know, I feel, like, I feel like at a certain point, some of us are going to need to partner up later in life and like deal with each other's cool stuff after we I die. I love that idea. We should normalize that. I've been thinking about it a lot. We'll circle back to that. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to shift gears a, a little bit, kind of a segue, um, you make music, mm -hmm. you write some of your own music as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about that. Talk to me. Um, yes, so I've been singing since I was like two. Um, my mom has this story that uh, she was like singing me the Winnie the Pooh theme song for me to go take a nap and I just like stared at her in the face and listened to her and like whatever. And I was really good at 
going to sleep and taking naps. I was, I was always ready to rest. Um, but then she like walked out of the room and then she heard me singing it by myself. And I, I like that story. And yeah, so I've, I've just been singing as long as I can remember. And I did like choir and show choir and musical theater growing up. Um, and then, yeah, in 2020, um, during like lockdown, I had always wanted to like pick piano back up again because I had taken a few lessons as a kid and I really just, I feel like I learned to accompany myself. Like I, I don't consider myself a pianist, like I'm not classically trained, there's a lot of things that I'm not practiced at, but I learned how to read chords and yeah, so I'm looking at my keyboard. Um, so I started by just like covering songs and kind of learning some chords. And since I already write poetry, I just turn a bunch of my poems into songs and kind of found a songwriting process that works for me. And so <clears throat> that part of music really kind of started in 2020 for you. Mm -hmm. What inspires the songs that you write? Oh my God, what inspires the songs that I write? It's a big question. Um, I mean, I've written a lot of breakup songs and a lot of crush songs. <laughs> I was going to call them love songs, but it's more like when I have a crush on someone. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think there's something really like regulating to me about the vibrations of music and also about like the tangible playing of the keys while I'm singing, while I'm breathing. So sometimes it's, it, it's often a, about like the words, but also sometimes, like sometimes I write things that are just instrumental. It's really about just kind of finding a way to express how I'm feeling and do something with it. Like get it out of my body. Um, and so the way that you're yeah. tapping the keys is like part of that expression. Definitely. That's really cool. I never really thought about that. Definitely. Um, like I've written some sad songs in the last few <laughs> months that like I haven't shared with anyone. Um, and that is really helpful to me because even though I like to write, sometimes there just aren't words, you know? And sometimes it really helps me to sing other people's words. So like, usually when I sit down at the, at the piano, like, there's some combination of me, like, singing some of my old songs, like songs I've written before that's comforting, working on something new, um, and like having chords pulled up of just different, like lots of pop songs or just things I think are funny, um, or things that help me emote, you know, mm -hmm. especially when I can do it privately. And I think that's something in common with, with writing too, is that like at its core, like I sing and I play music and I write and I act because it feels good to me and it helps me process. And then if I get to share it with someone, it feels kind of like a gift hmm. like to be witnessed in that in that like it's like really vulnerable but it's also over you know so I'm like well this happened kind of like when someone gets my journals one day when I die it's like there's a lot of stuff in there but like it already happened so like and it's, especially if I'm dead like no one can get mad at me like <laughs> think whatever you want <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that um, um, how often do you sit down at your at your keyboard I mean, it, it depends on the season of my life, really. Like, recently, um, my schedule's been pretty challenging, and yeah, I've had less amounts of time, but basically, whenever I'm home, that it's a reasonable time of day to mm -hmm. play piano. So I would say that's between like 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. loosely. Mm -hmm. um, I will sit down at mm -hmm. some point, but right now, that's only on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how long have you been acting? So, I acted as a kid. Okay. I was in, like, some church shows. And I, I forgot about that, but I say that because, um, in the last few years is the first time that I've been in male presenting roles on stage, except that I remembered that I played a man when I was, like, eight or something. In some 
church play with one of my brothers. I had completely forgotten about this memory, but I, we had like drawn a beard on me and stuff. And I was like, oh my god, I've actually done this before. It was written. <laughs> it was written. Um, but you know, so I did like m mostly musical theater when I was younger and through high school. And then I didn't act at all from 18 to 30. Mm -hmm. Um, I always kind of wanted to, and I also was in a season of life where I didn't feel, um, or I didn't have a lot of encouragement for my, like, creative expression. Not to blame that on other people, but I'm really, like, bolstered by, like, seeing other people do creative work and, like, having people believe in me, and, uh, I didn't really have a lot of that going on. <sighs> Whatever. That's not a fair summary exactly, but... Since I moved to Richmond, which has been on, yeah, a few years, I, I just, I, I love performing. I love being on the stage. Like, it just is so fun to me. I think it, and that's not the case for everyone. Like, a lot of people get stage fright and are nervous, and I'm not saying I never get nervous, but it's pretty rare. So I was like, I just should do the thing that feels good to me, that, like, lights me up. So I did a Shakespeare audition, and it went pretty badly, I would say. Like, I don't think I meant for Shakespeare, but I had so much fun at the audition, preparing for the audition, like, even bombing the audition. I was like, that was great. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to keep auditioning. So anyway, I ended up, yeah, um, getting cast in a show that I had a really good time in and, and just kept going. So, uh... It's more recent that I, like, call myself an actor, and also, as a neurodivergent person and a trans person, I feel like I have a lot of real-life acting experience, so. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes acting feels... I was going to say m more honest, but, like, I don't know exactly what I mean by that, but, like, performing in the world, like, in everyday life to like mask or to like try to control other people's responses like doesn't feel good to me but like being on a stage and being told like this character is angry which is like a hard emotion for me and like figuring out a way to like express that I, I just find it very healing like and very challenging and very fun do you feel like in those moments <clears throat> that you get to embody or express feelings or experiences that you don't feel like you have the ability to embody in your own life yeah that's happened a lot recently like with anger specifically um that's like also often coinciding with like therapy and like other other things going on in my life is i i always get this like feedback from whatever performing I'm doing, whether it's dance or music or acting. But the show that I'm in right now, yeah, one of my character or the character I'm playing does express, like, anger, and I don't know if I told you this already, but uh, the first night that we read through this scene, like, he's supposed to be visibly disturbed and, like, upset by the people around him, and I was, like, fuming on the inside. Like, I was tapped in, my lip was, like, quivering, like... I was like in my head I was in it and the director was like Parker it's not really reading that you're just like frozen you like and kind of looking bored and I was like oh that's funny that's probably how I act when I'm angry is I just like shut down oh my god what yeah. a revelation yeah you're like how long have I been in therapy <laughs> Well, I don't. No, I know, but still, it's one of those moments where it's like, this guy just cracked open, like... <laughs> yeah, and I was like, hmm, wow, I, uh, to me, I'm like, I, I look pissed, they should be scared of me, you know, but I'm just sitting there like... <laughs> but what an opportunity to get that kind of feedback from somebody that's going to say, this is how you look right now. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, and I, you know, of course, there's part of me that's like, oh no, my ego's dented, but I was like, thank you, and like, yeah. okay, cool, I'm going to work on, like, embodying that with my body language and like try trying to look annoyed with my face like I try not to do that most of the time in life you know but it's like okay interesting but there's definitely an honesty to people whose whose 
emotions read on their face. Like, oh, yeah. even if in situations that is not always the best thing, like, there is definitely, like, a, you know, a rawness to that, an authenticity to that, to people who, who can't keep it off of their face. Definitely. You and know? I aspire to, to, like, <clears throat> to do that as much as I can. That is so interesting. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's actually, like such an interesting thing to listen to it's it's fascinating and it's helping me in my real life like because like realizing that i'm allowed to show frustration and actually that that can be helpful to people who care about me to know when i'm upset about something right like yeah. not to yell at them but like but to show it to to like have my voice raised sometimes or to like express disappointment when i'm disappointed instead of pretending that i'm not also some people can see through me yeah, of course. But what yeah. A, what a That's journey. Cool. What, um, <clears throat> and I don't know if this is a more recent thing, <clears throat> like you were talking about as you return to acting as an adult, or if there was a moment that you had when you were a young person, but what was the first role that you had that made you feel like I'm an actor? Like I just acted on, you know, and like made you feel like you were in that world? Ooh, cool question. I'm going to try to not hold too much silence here. That's okay. <laughs> think about it for a moment. Please. I'm going to be thinking about this more later. Sometimes it takes <clears> a day or two. We can also circle back to this question if you want me to ask you something else. No, that's that's okay. Um, I'll just talk to you more about it later when I have... Okay. I think the first thing that popped into my mind was... <laughs> yeah, the, the, the first show that I got casting when I moved to Richmond was I played a pastor. You came to that show. Uh -huh. And I wouldn't say, you know, that was my number one performance of my life. And, like, I felt like a pastor. And that's pretty cool as a person with religious trauma that I got to, like, go through that experience and, like, connect. And I made all these backstories of, like, okay, this pastor has, like, a cat and he, like, wants to eat a grilled cheese. But he, like, I would, like, make up these backstories of, like, what he was thinking about while he while other people were talking and stuff yeah and i think just like yeah learning about that character analysis and then like honestly just having so much fun working with other people i i think i think that's such a big part of it like but i was like this is so fun and i feel like i'm being myself while i'm not being myself i don't know i was just like this is this works for me and if even if it goes nowhere like yeah which I don't even you know I love doing community theater I feel like I would pay to do it like I don't what about it made you feel like I'm an actor now like I'm in this world now is I mean, it that community is it like the process I mean that's a hard question <clears throat> to answer but I think honestly like there's this moment that really sticks out in my mind, like a top moment in my life, that was just, when I went to audition for that role, it was really a reading, like, the other people had already been cast, and I I went and I read with them, and then at, at the end I was like, so cool, like, what do you think? And, and they told me, like, oh, we'd love for you to play the part. And I, like, walked out and walked down the street to go to my car, and I was just, like, beaming just smiling and excited like I can picture it now I was on Grey Street and that like in that moment I was like oh I'm like doing the thing I want to do yeah. I I am acting I am doing it I'm an actor what what makes a successful performance for you The first thing that came to my mind is it, it has to do with um, how much I worry about how, there, how other people are perceiving me, even in rehearsal. Like, if I am really in my head, especially, I will say, like, the more that I've grown in my, like, transition, like, earlier in my, in my transition, I was really worried, like, do people think I, like... Like, what are people thinking about, like, my gender expression, or is my voice too high, or am I moving my wrists too much, or I don't know, whatever. 
and I was I was so worried about that that I wasn't able to be as present to to respond to other actors and to like have fun. Um, so I would say the opposite of that is when, of course, I know people are perceiving me when I'm on a stage, but when I'm able to kind of just not like not really think about my my own life at all like or the more that I can do that when I'm when I'm in a role when I, even when I'm backstage like I'm a lot of times I'm like well sometimes talking to people or whispering but I'm in character and I'm thinking about what the character is thinking about and yeah, I mean, of course I love when people tell me that I did a good job, but that's what feels good to me, is when I'm just in it. In it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you've been kind of gradually working up to your first drag performance. <sighs> Let's talk about that Let's a little talk bit. About I want to talk that. about... <laughs> I, th I, th I think back a little bit to, I think the first time that I remember talking about it, I don't know if we talked about it before this, but the first memory I have of talking about it, I think was actually when we hiked two Septembers ago. And you were talking to me about it and you were saying that you felt like you were ready to kind of like start exploring that. And I want you to talk to me about like where the desire came from and kind of where you've been going in the last, you know, year and some change as you're kind of thinking about doing it, and then, like, what your thoughts are. I just, just talk to me about it in <laughs> oh general. Oh, my God. I feel like we could talk about just this for an hour. All these things. Um, I gotta read it in. Okay. So. Yes. Uh, it has been a long process for me to feel like I wanted, uh, yeah, I guess to feel ready in a way, like, I, I've really enjoyed being more fluid with my gender expression, and I think the more that, yeah, that I'm just feeling really comfortable in my body, the more that I don't really care what I don't want to say what people think about me because that sounds so trite, but like, I, I think early when I was thinking about doing drag, performing like a femme drag character, like being a drag queen, um, it was still kind of triggering some dysphoria from being like assigned female at birth and being socialized female and, um, like for example, wearing this like pink sweatsuit. I love this sweatsuit but I might have been like oh if I wear that someone might think something eh. you know mm -hmm. which is totally valid and it was like part of my journey but now I just think like clothes are fun like I don't it, like I don't know I'll just wear whatever I want and I think what's appealing to me about drag is well first of all I love performing I love I love making people happy but I think you know, there's so many talented drag artists in Richmond, so mm -hmm. I'm not anticipating that I'm going to do it one time and be like, I'm as good as all of them. Like, that's mm -hmm. not really it. But I, I know that I want to share, like, my joy of fashion and music and um, be silly and be free. I don't know, it kind of feels like political. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels like, yeah, it feels like something I can do that's like, I don't know, I'm doing what I want to do. No one can tell me I can't. I mean, I think, um, <clears throat> I think you make a valid point um, when you're talking about how you, in you, you know, I hear you you catching yourself when you're talking about, like, thinking what, what people think of you or whatever, and, and you catching yourself because, like, well, I don't want to think about that. But, like, I think it's a valid point because, for better or for worse, a lot of people's initial instinct is to try to categorize a person's gender. It's like you want to put them in a box in your head. So you look at somebody and you're like, what box do I put this in? 
what box is this? What, you know, and so I think that like, to me, it makes sense as a trans person, if you've gone through your whole life being put in the wrong box and you, I would imagine that you would be hypersensitive to like, what message am I going to send if I put this shirt on? Mm -hmm. Are they going to put me in the box that I don't want them to put me in because I'm signaling that that's the box, you know? And so I can see how that's like very encumbering because you can't be free to put the shirt on that you want to put on because you're like, well, what is, what is this going to read? You know, so I think that it is like a very powerful thing to say. That's not a thing. Yeah, you don't get to and put it me in a box. Doesn't matter because don't put me in a box. Yeah, you can decide that for yourself. When we talked about it <clears throat> on our hike, I remember you saying something to me that I thought was really poignant um, about, you know, if you were to do drag as a queen, and you were like, you know, I've was in drag my whole life before I transitioned. And I thought that was like a really powerful statement. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. That, that gives me chills. I mean, it's not a completely original thought. I'm pretty sure RuPaul has some kind of quote, like, yeah, everyone knows it and I'm not going to say it correctly, but it, it's something about like, yeah. And the rest is drag. The rest is drag. Yeah. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> Like, we're all born naked and the rest is drag or something like that, yeah. Yeah, shout out to RuPaul. But, like, I I remember, as you know, I was married. I remember specifically on my wedding day when I was playing the part of a happy bride. I knew I was acting, and I remember the word drag being in my head where I was like, I feel like I'm in drag. Like, I had these, like like, stuff built into my dress, and I had, like, so much makeup on that was, like, supposed to look natural, but it was so much makeup. And my hair was, like, tied in this way, and, um, I mean, there's, like, so much else there, too, but, like, I do have a, a lot of experiences like that where I felt like I was putting on something to satisfy other people's expectations. And I feel like especially in the realm of dating and being a queer person, like, like moving away from like the wedding day thing, that's something that also has impacted my, my expression or like limited my expression sometimes is if I'm like, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm trying to attract a certain type of person who might be attracted to a certain type of person, I need to present as that type of person. Mm -hmm. Like so much to think about but I think for me like the more that I can let go of that and I think that I have I mean I haven't really like dated that much kind of on purpose <laughs> that's a whole other thing <laughs> um but like yeah I think when I'm less concerned about mm. that piece in my life now like the more free I feel to wear whatever I want and um so like circling back to the potential impending first drag performance. So we do think this is going to happen at some point. Yes. Yes. You're thinking about it. You've been, you've been looking at stuff. You've been thinking about stuff. Yes. You've been thinking about places. Like, there is a plan. Do you have, like, a timeline? Um, my hope is to do uh, Fresh Faces, which is mm -hmm. a local Richmond show that has people performing for the first time in this area. Um, I'm not officially signed up for it yet, but I've been in, in contact. So, April? Okay. Potentially. If that doesn't work out, I, I'll try for the next one. But that's kind of my goal, is to feel, like, ready by then. Um, I do have, like, some wigs. I do have a lot of makeup. I have a drag mom, mm -hmm. my dear friend, who, like, has, d like, performed a lot before and is kind of given me a bunch of tips. I also have a stage mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My friend Ryan. And um, I have, I've been like gathering clothes for a while thinking, oh, this will be for my drag wardrobe. This will be for my drag wardrobe. This, And then it's turned out that I just wear them. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> no, like, literally that orange set up there. I'll have to show you later. Um, but I'm like, you know, I don't really know what is gonna happen, but I have a name, I have like a playlist of all these songs, so really what isn't done yet is like 
deciding on a song and coming up with some kind of routine. Like, I, it'll probably be pretty uh, on the fly in a way for me for my first okay. time. But I want to have a few, like, key moments where I'm like, and this is where I do the splits or take off my shirt or something. I okay. Don't know. Some, some power moments, you know? I love that. And so when this when this finally happens, which I am very much looking forward to, in that moment where your number is over, like, how do you want to feel? Um, ooh, I love that question. I think that's such a powerful question. Um, how do I want to feel? God, now I'm thinking about the feelings wheel. Do you know that tool? It's this big <laughs> chart in therapy of different feelings words. <laughs> I use it. I hate it, but it's helpful. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I guess I want to feel, um, I was going to say happy or like fulfilled, like, uh, satisfied, uh -huh. um, like, connected. Gra like gratified kind of, gratified? like a gratifying kind of feeling. I think feeling. that word flew by my brain. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Something like that. I like, feel you. Yeah. I think the the things that will make me feel like it's a successful performance for me mm -hmm. is like feeling connected to the audience so like getting to have like moments of people you know mm -hmm. where you like make eye contact take their dollar whatever <laughs> and like seeing my friends you know like I'm sure I'll have like people there to support me um, and then like from the performance piece the same thing as acting in any role I want to feel like I'm more present and in it and having fun than I am worried about how people are seeing me. Okay. I love that so yeah. much. Uh, we might have to do a like follow up where are they where are they now episode oh, <laughs> in April. Ah. And and revisit that question like after you've done it where I ask you, okay, like how did it feel? All right, a couple more quick questions for you. We're almost okay. done. <clears throat> I ask everybody this. What is one work of art that you think everyone should experience? Oh, these questions are so big, Lydia. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. What? It can be anything. It can be anything. It can be an actual like piece of art. I will tell you if it helps at all. Amy was the very first person I asked this question to, and she said the brunch shift at a restaurant, the wait staff at a, in a brunch shift at the restaurant, and she, I highly recommend that you watch her interview and her answer because it's brilliant, but it can be anything that you consider a work of art. That's gorgeous. It can be a movie, it can be a painting, it can be a thing like that, it can be whatever you want. I love that, especially as someone who's worked in restaurants. Brunch shift. Okay, I will watch that. Um... Okay, I'm going to be just fully honest. Okay. The first thing that came to my mind when I was like, first I thought about paintings, and then I was like, movies. And I was like, The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan. I was like, wait, no, no, no. I do think that movie holds up exquisitely. But I don't think that's the thing everyone needs to see. So that's my... But honestly, if you went with that, it's a very Parker answer. That's... And I would support it. Thank you. I, I, that's a brain answer that matters. And okay. I'm also going to scoot up to the side um, and just say, like, the, the next thing that came to my mind, it was just, like, being able to experience, like, beautiful stars. Mm. Like, I got to go to Sedona once. It doesn't have to be in Sedona. But, like getting to see, like, a really big, clear, quiet night sky. Mm. I think that's, like, something on Earth that makes me feel really, like, glad to be here. Mm. I love that. Um, what is your dream project? <gasps> oh, I have so many! My dream project? Okay, I do want to be in a band. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's one thing. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, so I could go into detail about that, but I, I do really want to be in a band. Um, so that is a dream. Okay. Um, I also <clears throat> want to go on a tour, whether it is a tour of a show, like a play, 
or a dance performance or a band. I love traveling and I am like my best, most present self when I'm traveling and I just think it would be so cool to get to like work with other people to like travel and make art and have it be this trip. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a tour. I said that. And um, being in a band. I also am interested in doing film projects. Like moving picture? Yeah, okay. moving pictures. <laughs> cinematography. As uh, a film photographer a and a film photographer, sometimes you have to differentiate. Yes. Um, <laughs> like doing like TV or movies. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as being on stage because I love being on stage and I love the live audience aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something I want to try that would be challenging. So I see that happening at some point in my future. Okay. Yeah. All right, last question. What's next? <sighs> What's next? Um... I mean, there's, there's so many things I want to do, so many things I am doing. When I think about the next, like, three months of my life, there's the weekend that I have performances for the show that I'm in. And there are pockets of time that I'll be writing music. I am really excited to see what happens after March is over because I also have a lot of other commitments as you know in the evenings right now but like come April 1st I'm gonna have a lot of free space so maybe what's next is me like just keep doing what I'm doing and see what clarity comes and like see what I want to focus on next mm, that's nice that's a good little spot to be in honestly it's going to be a lot of space opening up. Usually I feel overwhelmed when I know that, oh, I'm going to have a bunch of free time at some point, but I feel really excited about it. Um, so we'll see. I love that. TBD. All right. We'll say goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> but don't leave. <laughs>